Crypto Caesar, Caesar Capital. Hope you're well. Um, I thought I'd do a video uh, today um, on uh, portfolio allocation and the balance of risk and diversification of that um, portfolio. Now, the first thing I want to say is I'm not your financial advisor and this is not financial advice. And anything I say here shouldn't be purported to be taken as financial advice. Okay, this is simply um, some ideas and information that I've put together for you to help you on your crypto journey. Okay, so the, the first thing is this, is I hear a lot of people on crypto Twitter and other various social media uh, places talking about crypto and saying stupid things like, I'm all in this altcoin, that's it, or I'm all in these two altcoins and that's it. Uh, and to be quite frank, that really is um, a stupid, stupid idea, because if you ask any uh, seasoned uh, investor, um, they will tell you that um, a good, solid, strong portfolio is all about balance. OK, balance of risk and diversification. All right. It's as simple as that. And if you have a good, solid, balanced portfolio, well diversified, not too much risk, then you uh, will uh, see that portfolio grow over time, hopefully with the least amount um, of um, headache. Okay, so what I want to do now is consider a few principles and then we'll have a look at some uh, portfolio ideas uh, for uh, crypto. Uh, so the first thing um, th that you need to ask yourself when... Um, considering your allocation to uh, crypto is, you know, what is your risk tolerance? Okay, everybody has a completely different uh, risk tolerance, you know, and lots of factors come into play when considering a person's uh, risk tolerance. Everybody's different. Okay. And some of those factors might be, you know, how old are you? Okay, are you um, a retired uh, person um, who has a limited income, not too much savings, obviously your risk, risk tolerance isn't going to be very high, is it? Okay. Or are you uh, middle-aged with no children? You have a good job. You have lots of savings. You don't have a mortgage on your home. You have some investments. You have passive incomes. You know, obviously, again, um, you know, these are all things that, that, that you've got to take into account. So, you know, how old are you? and what's your financial situation uh, another um question you might want to ask yourself when considering risk tolerance is this are you a seasoned investor okay have you weathered many crypto cycles before is this your first crypto cycle is it your second one or uh, maybe you've uh, weathered um previous market cycles in other markets but that's something as well uh, that will come into play when considering your risk tolerance, because obviously the more seasoned an investor you are, uh, the more um, you will be used to volatility uh, and not fall uh, for, you know, the old classic uh, FUD uh, that you might uh, read uh, in the media. So how old are you? Are you a seasoned investor? What's your financial situation? And what are your available funds? OK, have you got a lot to invest or have you got um, a, a little amount uh, to invest? And and uh, f finally, um, how long this is going into the risk tolerance point, how long can you remain in your position? OK, because time horizon is really important as well. If you can only remain in your position for, for, for three months, then that's something you've got to take into account isn't it? Uh, and, and, you know, really, you shouldn't really be in crypto if you could only sit in a position for three months. Um, so how long can you sit in that position? Can you sit in it for three years, four years, two years? You know, that is something also that you uh, must take into account. What is your time horizon? And finally, how much can you afford to lose? Um, uh, and again, that will go um, into your risk tolerance. Now, um, the second point is this, is that the, the, the more you have to invest, really, the, the, the less risk you should be taking. So if you're putting a million plus, you know, if you're a high net worth individual and you're putting a million plus in or you're an ultra high net worth individual and you're putting more than that in, um, then really you shouldn't be taking on that much risk because 
you don't want to be too greedy. You just want to see a good return on your portfolio uh, and think about balance. OK, the, the last one is simple. Don't use leverage. You don't need to use le leverage in crypto markets. Crypto markets are volatile enough and you do not need to use uh, leverage. OK, so let's have a look at some different uh, portfolios, different allocation sizes uh, to different types of crypto um, assets. Um, and um, then we will consider um, uh, how uh, they fit with risk tolerance. So the, the first one is uh, the what I would like to call the model crypto portfolio. OK, and these portfolios are going to be. Um, uh measured on risk from one to five, five being the most risky, one uh, being the, the least uh, risky. Uh, and this is, what, as I said, what I'd like to call the model crypto portfolio. And this is essentially how my portfolio will look uh, come uh, the, the halving um, event or just before the halving event uh, in April 2024. So um, this this would be my um, model crypto portfolio, and this is how I would personally invest my own money, uh, and that is having fifty percent um, of um, my um, hard earned money allocated to Bitcoin. The reason why is Bitcoin is solid. Um, you know the the blocks keep uh, m they keep mining the blocks block by block. It's the first mover in crypto. It's solid. You have a lot of institutional interest in Bitcoin uh, and therefore the risk with Bitcoin is not as great as any other crypto asset. So 50 percent of my portfolio be allocated to Bitcoin, then 25 percent of my portfolio um, allocated to Ethereum. Uh, the reason why is Ethereum, of course, is number two in market cap. Um, it's a solid um, network um, and it keeps uh, moving forward, um, and um, I would be willing to uh, place 25% of my hard-earned money into um, uh, Ethereum. Now, the other 25% I would um, place uh, uh, on altcoins, but um, I would split those between probably about 10 altcoins or thereabouts, approximately 10 altcoins, and five of those altcoins would be blue chip altcoins. And when I say blue chip altcoins, I mean altcoins that are in the top 20 uh, market cap um, on um, coin market cap, not obviously including uh, stable coins. And the other five, um, I would um, include five very well researched altcoins that I'm happy with. And I think that they have a good roadmap. They're not scammy. The tokenomics are good. Um, and I feel safe um, uh, in putting my hard-earned money into those. Now, the reason why it, uh, I would put, um, I would put the twenty-five percent split between um, ten altcoins, five essentially blue chip, and five uh, new altcoins is because I think that there's a good balance there. Okay, the five um, established altcoins, the blue chip altcoins, hopefully will will do well because they fared previous um, bull and bear cycles. The projects are solid. They're good. They're moving forward. So the risk is, is a little less. But of course, the new, the five other uh, altcoins that I'd put into that 25% uh, would be new altcoins. Uh, and the risk, of course, is a little bit greater because we just don't know where they're going. We don't know um, whether they're going to meet the targets on their project deadlines lots of things uh they could you know all, all sorts of things factor into to, to that but that that's how um i um would uh put uh, my money so in conclusion the model portfolio and this is the portfolio that i personally like myself and this is how i you uh, drive my portfolio 50 percent bitcoin 25 percent ethereum and 25% in altcoins split between 10, five of five altcoins established blue chip altcoins in the top 20, not including stable coins, and the other five new projects uh, to crypto, which have been very well researched. Um, uh, and hopefully that will give me the nice balance of, you know, potentially getting those really good gains on those new projects, um, balance with uh, hopefully the solid gains I'll get from Bitcoin the solid gains I'll get from Ethereum 
and hopefully the solid gains I'll get from the other five blue chip altcoins. So that's the, the model uh, crypto portfolio. So the risk is one, um, so the least amount of risk. The, the next crypto portfolio is um, risk two. Uh, so getting a little bit more riskier here, uh, but 25% Bitcoin in this one. Um, 25, sorry, 50% Ethereum. So, you know, you're going heavy on Ethereum. Of course, um, as I've said, Ethereum is very established um, and it's an excellent network. Um, and, you know, Ethereum is a pretty good bet uh, in, in my view. And then 25% in uh, the altcoins, um, as I've stated. So five new altcoins and five established blue chip uh, altcoins but of course the risk is getting a little bit stronger here because you're taking more out of bitcoin more into ethereum uh, and um, of course you're again relying on um, those altcoins as well so the, the second portfolio uh, sorry the third one uh, would be um, 50 percent um, ethereum and 50 percent altcoins again um, for me those altcoins would have to be uh, five new altcoins and five blue chip established um, altcoins. But of course, the risk is getting more, okay, because you're now in the territory of having 25% of your portfolio in new altcoins that could go to zero, okay, uh, or they could have problems with the SEC, um, could, be all, could be hacked, all sorts of problems, okay, so the risk is getting greater now um, and probably a little bit uncomfortable for me um uh here uh but um this is the next slide so this is um where we're getting really quite high on the risk scale here so this is risk four crypto portfolio four way you're basically um you're 25 percent ethereum and you're 75 percent altcoins but still you're five um at least five established altcoins and five new altcoins but the risk is getting super 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 high here because you're putting a very 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 big bet uh on um altcoins that could potentially see issues with the sec you see issues with hacks see you know all sorts of problems okay um could go to zero so the risk is getting very, very high now and extremely uncomfortable for me personally. Um, and the, 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 the final uh, crypto portfolio is portfolio five, which is risk five. So the risk is now, um, you know, off, off, well, getting close to being off the scale, very, very uncomfortable. You're a hundred percent in altcoins. You've got no Ethereum no bitcoin to hedge against your your positions um for me extremely uncomfortable but you know if it's again five established altcoins and five new altcoins uh maybe um that might work but it's very very risky um extremely uh risky i mean maybe you could switch it around a bit and have 100 percent in established altcoins that might bring the risk down a little bit but still you know, this is uh, completely um, close to being off the scale. Then you have um, uh, crypto uh, uh, portfolio six, which is risk five, but off the scale at this point. Um, this is the idiot portfolio, in my view. Um, this is where people get wrecked. And this is where the greed train kicks in. And this is something which just, in my view, is just utterly ridiculous. Okay. Um this is where you have 100% altcoins and none of them, none of those altcoins are in the top 20, uh, not excluding uh, um, stable coins. So you are taking on a mammoth amount of risk here, a mammoth amount of risk um, and something that I think is just plain stupid um, in my view. Uh, but you'd be surprised how many people actually do this. Um, a lot of people do this. Um, and what happens to them is they get wrecked. Okay. Um, so just a few closing uh, remarks. You know, uh, crypto with, with portfolio allocation, as I said, it's all about balance. Okay. Have a really good, diversified, balanced portfolio. Okay. And that 
is not investing in loads of shit coins you've never heard of that have never weathered a, a, a cycle that are only listed on two exchanges that have a market cap of 100k and a volume of two quid i mean come on don't be stupid okay think about balance think about risk all right couple of closing a few six closing remarks first thing is this on your journey have a well thought out plan okay of what you're going to do and that includes research okay you've got to research into uh, the things you're investing in okay and there are so many tools now on the internet that you can find that will help you uh, on this um, journey of research so many things uh, and that will hopefully make you make or force you to make, hopefully, an informed good decision. So have a well thought out plan. What are you going to do? Okay. Then consider your risk tolerance. Okay. And think of all of those points that I made to you right at the beginning of the video. How old are you? You know, what's, what are your available funds? Are you a seasoned investor? Um, how long can you remain in position? How much can you afford to lose? Okay. So consider your risk tolerance and then allocate uh, accordingly. Third, as I've said a moment ago, have a good balanced portfolio. Balance and diversification is key. It's key. All right. It really, really is. Uh, and um, I can't stress that too much to you. Um, fourthly, don't be greedy. OK, the, the, the greedy people are the people who put lots and lots of money into altcoins that are very, very risky. I mean, you may as well go to Vegas and just gamble your money away. You may as well do that. So don't be greedy. And part of being not being greedy is not using leverage. You do not use, need to use leverage in uh, long-term investing in crypto. It's stupid. You will get wrecked. Um, you will get margin called and you will lose your money. Okay. Uh, and finally, and I suppose this is the most important point out of them all, is always take profit. You've always got to take profit. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere out with this. So it's important that you always take profit. And taking profit at the right time is very, very difficult. No one can, you know, magically time the market top exactly. If they do, it's just luck. And no one can time the market bottom perfectly. Again, it's just luck. Uh, but taking profit on the way up um, is always the thing. Uh, to do and understanding how to take profit you have to understand market cycles you have to understand all sorts of things but hopefully uh, you can uh, do that by researching uh, on uh, the internet okay so I, I hope that's helped you um, it, on your journey if you'd like to join the group where we talk about things like this all the time you know we're very very hot on risk if you want to join uh, the VIP group if you're interested in the uh, altcoins that I'm going to be releasing on the 29th of September this month, um, then please uh, reach out to me on Twitter or reach out to me via the website. Um, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for listening and have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.